Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the BBG and Immortal Towers. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You get my videos as they come out. And what more would you want out of your day? And this is the long-awaited Servants Breakdown video. It's going to be going into how Servants affect your stats. So like when you put Might into a Servant, how does that affect your Servant dependent on the faction that it's from? Now I'm going to begin in a little while. I just have to do a couple of things real quick. I have to just get that box from the uh, Happy Spring Lantern Festival before it ends. Because worth it. Uh, <laughs> anyway. This video will also be broken up into sections at the bottom. You will be able to click on them. This intro bit is probably going to be the longest part. Then it will be broken into Immortal, Skyshine, Primordial and Deification with a closing statement on servants themselves, like which ones are the best sort of thing. And that segment is only going to be talking about the heroes because the fact of the matter is hero servants are just the best that's just that's just how that's just how this works man that's just how this works i don't make the rules and i must also mention <laughs> godly buddha 10 currently has reached max level that's it it's done it's done and i will be god realm 15 tomorrow and i have no other way or place to spend cultivation base except god realms now so God Realm 70, here we come, basically. <laughs> anyway, so the thing I wanted to do... Now, this information is probably going to come late to a lot of people because this video is going to come out, like... I'll try and put it out, like, an hour and a half before the event ends, but I'm sure most of you have figured this out already. It's cheaper to buy one golden spoon, use it, get at least one of the premium, I don't know, food dishes? Is that what we're calling them? I don't know to get one of the pre premium food dishes, and then you just buy the other one with 30. You save 10 Spirit Jade, basically, and you only spend 50, so you can get 20 back during the limited reward event. So which one do I need? Meat? I need meat. I need meat! Okay. Now, redeem. Redeem. Now let's have a little looky. Well, first of all, I'm just going to... Claim my last 10 back. Thank you. Overall, only spent 30. Not bad. Okay, please let me get an evil. Spring Lantern selectable. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, boy. Give me. Hell yeah. Evil token, man. Oh, I'm so close to my first evil servant. So close. The grind. The grind. And of course, I just need to do some daily things. You know, you know how it is. I will skip through most of this, obviously, so I can get stuck straight into the servant explanation. And I will also say this episode is going to have a lot of numbers in it. Quite, quite a lot of numbers. So I will actually put the table in the description as well. Just so it's something to refer to. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it so we can start to understand how putting attributes affects our stats. Now, I'm going to start with the Eastern Immortal faction. Why? I mean, why not, really? Now, Ghost King, a lovely Eastern Immortal, arguably the best, but... When you put stats into an Eastern Immortal character, this is based on a per 500 attribute add. Like, for example, one of these, one of these, basically, a Blood Essence. It's based off one Blood Essence. So the numbers I'm about to say are based off the addition of one Blood Essence to Might, Intellect, Command, and Insight. So for Eastern Immortals, when you add 500 Might to an Eastern Immortal, your attack, your raw stats will go up 25 and that is 25 base. Now, the reason, you know, it's at per 500 is because one extra attribute is, is really negligible when it comes to affecting your stats. Like, it's literally 0, 0.00 sort of number. So, per 500 just makes more sense, you know. Now, when it comes to defense for Eastern Immortal, you're looking at, for every 500 you put into command, your defense will increase by 5. For every 500 you put into intellect, your health will increase by 125. For every 500 you put into 
insight, your evasion will increase by five. Now, these numbers go for, of course, the whole faction of Eastern Immortals. Doesn't matter who you add those stats to, that is what's going to happen to your raw stats, basically. Now, moving on to Sky Shine. So, I'm trying to make this as streamlined as possible so it's easily digestible. Again, I'm going to put these numbers in the description below. But, I mean, tables are annoying. Let's be honest, no one likes tables. <laughs> but, for Sky Shine, lovely Tang Priest, of course, for my Sky Shine example. When you add 500 might to a Sky Shine servant, your attack is going to increase by 20. When you add 500 to command for a Sky Shine servant, your defense is going to increase by 15. When you add 500 intellect to a Sky Shine servant, your HP increases by 100. When you add 500 insight to a Sky Shine character, your evasion goes up by 15. Now, I'm going to say, first of all, Skyshine Servants are probably the most balanced, really, in terms of giving you stats to attributes, which is really why Tang Priest is mained so much. Like, he is just an all-around great character for both stats and as a servant, really. Now, for Primordial, I'm going to use my lovely Yandi as an example, because he was useful to upgrade. <laughs> anyway. For every 500 might you put into a Primordial Servant, your attack is going to increase by 30. That is the most, really, but Primordial Servants are so damn rare to find like, a good one, which makes it kind of moot, in a way, when you only aim for heroes that actually allow you to increase their skills. But anyway, for every 500 command you put into a Primordial, your defense will increase by 10. For every 500 intellect, your health will increase by 120. For every 500 insight, your evasion will increase by 10. Now, just to really quickly finish off this basic sort of outlay of how servant attributes affect stats, I'm going to finish with deification. The, I want to say lovely Yang Jian, but I will explain why he's not so lovely, I suppose, in at the end, where I do some comments on servants in general. So for deification, for every 500 might you put into deification character, your attack is going to increase by 20. For every 500 command, your defense will increase by 10. For every 500 intellect, your health will increase by 150. For every 500 insight, your evasion will increase by 10. Now, if you've been paying attention to the numbers or you're referring down to the table as I talk, I'm going to actually just jump straight into which servants are the best, so to speak. And I'm obviously only going to talk about the hero servants. Skyshine Faction, if you again refer to the table down the bottom just so you have all the numbers lined up in front of you, you can see that it is definitely above average compared to the other three factions, which is the reason Tang Priest, or at least for free-to-play, because he is by far the best free-to-play character, his skills plus 4% everything is second only to Goddess skills, which is plus 5%. So this is the reason that Tang Priest is most free-to-play's main, even if they didn't really know about how each attribute affects your stats, if you have done Sky Shine up, then that is generally a good way to go if you're just looking at stats. Now, talking about, and obviously free to play, he is the best insight character, but talking about the best intellect character, this is uh, somewhat of a, a difficult thing, especially if you've just started and you're, or you haven't just started, or you're like me, and you, you, you got characters late or you got characters and you didn't know which ones you needed to level up in order to be the most efficient, which obviously I am not the most efficient uh, at all. I'm not going to ever claim that because I'm not. But for me, I got Dragon Princess pretty much. That was my first intellect character by far and away. And in the game, she is the second best intellect character. And of course, based on the table below, you can see that stat-wise, leveling her up isn't the worst thing you can do in the world. But the best intellect character is Hell Queen. She is very much, she's basically the Ghost King of intellect. And I'm going to talk about Ghost King next. But if you have the choice and you haven't got all your servants yet, or you're just about to get servants, then ideally you want to mix and match sort of thing. So if you already have an intellect hero, so for example, you've accidentally got well, not even accidentally, intentionally got Dragon Princess after anyone else in that faction, or Dragon Princess is the one you intended to main for intellect, 
then mix and match that with, for example, Ghost King from the Netherworld faction for Might. Ideally, and this is just a personal observation, you don't want to have Dragon Princess and Hell Queen as your first of both factions because they're both intellect based and they are great intellect characters. But ideally, you want all of them going up at the same time. So if you have Dragon Princess, you've got Tang Priest, then you get Ghost King, then you've sort of hit the mark for all of your attributes there because those are pretty much the best and again it depends on how many tokens you can actually get so if you're in a new server or a newer server where competition is high and you don't have all of your servants yet then definitely the most ideal lineup is going to be tang priest journey to the west yao ji from heaven palace for command since she is first in command in the game that's cool in and of itself that free to play can get that Ghost King is the third for Might, and of course he's in Netherworld. Now the problem lies in which tokens you can get first. Now in newer servers, I'm pretty sure Heaven Palace are easier to get, which is really why I had Dragon Princess so early and why I leveled her up so much, because she was a intellect character main, basically. So realistically, this all depends on the servants you got first and the servants you put effort into. You know, like... So I am going to get Dragon Princess to a thousand talent in the next talent event because I've gone so far on her already. And given the table below, as you can see, she still gives me quite a bit of stats. Decent all-rounder just because of her faction, really. But after her, my next intellect servant is definitely going to be Hell Queen because she is the best intellect character in the game. At least as far as I know, obviously, I don't know goddesses. That's not in my purview. That's above my pay grade, you know. <laughs> That's above my pay grade. But my next mission after getting Dragon Princess to a 1000 is actually working on Ghost King because he is very much the best, well, one of the best for Might in the game. And he is, of course, the one I'm actually leveling up the skills of when I get extra Netherworld tokens, of course. And that's also the reason that I've actually put Yang Jian on the back, bur back burner, because his skill up, he is arguably, he's not the worst for Might, but he is not. He is nowhere near the best for Might. So if you're going to actually, if you've got all of your Heaven Palace servants, only skill up Yao Ji, unless of course you're like me and you've mained Dragon Princess, I'm obviously skilling her up simply because, hope I think maybe when I get... I may even start, once I get my next set of 10, I may even start levelling up Yao Ji's command because she is literally first in command for the game and I could use higher command, I'll be honest with you. But again, don't skill up Yang Ji and with Heaven Palace tokens, it's not worth it. I don't want to say it's a waste if you've already done it. If you've done it, you've done it. It's extra stats, don't worry about it. But if you have done that, take like... For the rest of the time that you get Heaven Palace tokens, try and put them into Yao Ji. She is literally the best Heaven Palace servant, basically. Pretty much the best, if we go by ranking in effect. Second is obviously Dragon Princess. But Netherworld is a hard one, like because you've got Ghost King and Hell Queen from Netherworld. And they're both literally the best in their respective attribute, and that's frustrating as fuck. Because you're going to have to choose. If you're free to play, you're just going to have to choose. Which, at this point, knowing all of this now, doesn't make my having made Dragon Princess my main intellect such a bad idea. Because I wouldn't have been able to split resources between Ghost King and Hell Queen anyway, in terms of levelling up their skills. And those skills are what make the difference when they start actually getting some actual stats behind them. Because percentage differences, obviously. The higher the number originally, the more it affects the stats when you add percentages to it. Like, each of these is plus 15%. That's absolutely huge. 15%. Obviously, Dragon Princesses is only 5. Or 10, sorry. Instead of 15. That's a 5% difference, and that shit makes a huge difference once you actually really get into the 10 millions sort of range for attributes but yeah in conclusion although for example deification gives the most amount of health for intellect that doesn't make it more efficient than putting the intellect into for example arguably the lowest sky shine where you get 100 
health for every 500 intellect. If that intellect that you put into in, as a Skyshine servant has skills that can be boosted, then that is going to be better. Deification, they're a struggle. They're, an, they're a real struggle, not only to get, but to level. <laughs> you know, like Yang Jian, he is the, pretty much the only deification servant. He is the only deification servant I have that actually has skills, and he's still bad, you know? So take this table with a grain of salt, you know, take this information with a grain of salt. It's a good extra, but don't, like, lose your mind because you think you've done wrong. You know, like, I've technically done wrong here. Like, you could see it. But I'm not going to worry about it because I can gradually fix it over time. Not that it even needs to be fixed, so to speak, but I can make myself better, faster, with this information. And I'd say as a final bit of advice for really, really advanced players, um, this, this won't apply to anybody who hasn't maxed Tang Priest yet. That's, that's 100 uh, Journey to the West tokens alone. So disregard this until you've maxed Tang. But after you've maxed Tang, all of your Journey to the West tokens should go to Sun Wukong because he is uh, um, the, pretty much the next best, the next best Might character in Journey to the West. And he's pretty much worth doing. But that's the way the game was made. I don't make the rules. I just attempt to explain them. <laughs> uh, but with all that being said, I'm really trying to keep this short. I hope this makes sense as well. But let me know in the comments if you have any further questions. I can expand. Once again, I will put the table in the description below. You can refer to it as I talk so you can sort of understand what it is that I'm saying. And so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I hope, it, I hope you enjoy it. I really do, because I don't even know if it's made sense. I'll be completely honest with you. <laughs> but anyway, as always, have a great day.